What's up guys, it's Kayla and Jim. Welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. It has been 72 years <laughs> since we have sat <clears throat> and filmed the video. We're still, still trying to uh, put together the remaining videos from our storm chasing that we did back in April and early May of this year. Because uh, somebody took way too many hours of footage. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hours of footage as well as different camera angles and trying to sync it all up together. There's a lot of editing that goes on. So There's a lot going on. Props to editing Kayla for getting all that done. We've had other things going on. We've, we've had a we've move. Moved studios. <laughs> as you right. can see, the background is different. What is this? Oh my gosh, things have changed. We're filming in a garage that is 7,000 degrees. <laughs> we really appreciate you guys hanging out with us, bearing with us while editing Kayla gets everything together and posts what she can. As we speak, it's mid-July, and is. we're just getting to what our topic is going to be yes. today, and that <laughs> is the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season prediction by the NOAA National Weather Service. So we wanted to put this out, we targeted in June, in June. to do this, but... Things have happened, but, and here we are. We're, but here we are, we're right? Here, we're here today with you. And while you're waiting for new videos to come out, if you haven't already checked out our Storm Chasing series, go check that out. It's called Storm Chasers Meteotech Weather Edition Season 2. So far there are four or five videos out. Go check them out. They're phenomenal if we do say so ourselves. <laughs> we get stuck in a couple of precarious situations. Oh my gosh! And we see five and a half tornadoes. So if you're curious about that, I will link it right up here for you to watch after you're done seeing what the Atlantic hurricane season has to offer this year, of course. But before we get started, if you find that you're enjoying this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below so you never miss another Meteorology Monday. So the Atlantic hurricane season runs typically from June 1st to November 30th every year. Now there are sometimes a storm can form earlier, sometimes a storm can form later, but that is what the National Weather Service has defined for the Atlantic hurricane season, and their prediction has come out. Of course, we're kind of a little bit later into the season of when we wanted to put this out, so there's going to be probably an update not too long from this video, which is going out mid-July. But what we're going to do is discuss what they've already put out up to this point. For this year, NOAA predicts a 30% chance of a near-normal season, a 60% chance of an above-normal season, and a 10% chance of a lower-than-normal season. How do they calculate that? So what they do is they look back over X amount of years, I think it's a 30-year average, yep. and they, they average it out how many storms were formed every year, average it out over 30. Basically what they do is they predict for this year and then they determine is it going to be more than normal, is it going to be near normal, or is it going to be below normal? And they base that based on percentage of confidence. Right now, based on what they're seeing, we have a at normal or above normal is about 90% of yep. that pie, right? So 30 and 60, 90%. Yep. In total, NOAA is forecasting 13 to 19 named storms with winds of 39 miles per hour or higher. Of those, six to 10 are forecast to become hurricanes with winds of 74 miles per hour or higher including three to five major hurricanes, category three, four, or five, with winds of 111 miles per hour or higher. NOAA has a 70% confidence in these ranges. Commerce Secretary Howard Lutnick said, NOAA and the National Weather Service are using the most advanced weather models and cutting edge hurricane tracking systems to provide Americans with real-time storm forecasts and warnings. With these models and forecasting tools, we have never been more prepared for hurricane season. National Weather Service Director Ken Graham said, In my 30 years at the National Weather Service, we've never had more advanced models and warning systems in place to monitor the weather. This outlook is a call to action. Be prepared. Take proactive steps now to make a plan and gather supplies to ensure that you're ready before a storm threatens. So let's discuss 
what led to their decision on 30% near normal, 60% above normal. This season is forecasted to continue to have a Enzo neutral condition. We also have warmer than average ocean temperatures. Weaker wind shear will be in place overall, and there will be higher activity from the West African monsoon. So let's break it down. So what does it mean? So if you have a more active monsoon yep. over in Africa, the Western African continent, so that you have more moisture for any storms that roll off. So they'll right. be able to carry that moisture and have a higher basis of moisture being in the atmosphere instead of starting out right. drier. Because if you don't know, a lot of these hurricanes actually come from Africa and move across the Atlantic Ocean. Not all of them, of course, but some of them do. Yeah, exactly. As we get further into the season, more of those storms come off of Africa yep. and, and that plays a critical role in the development of storms that far east right. making its way westward right. around that high pressure dome over the Atlantic <laughs> the big and high funneling it <laughs> toward the west yeah. uh, into the Caribbean. Also, in addition to the higher moisture from the monsoons, we also have lighter wind shear, yep. so that will allow the storms to grow and Less not get torn apart. Yep. And then the higher ocean temperatures to fuel those storms, all that leads to a higher confidence that it will be uh, an above average season this year. So again, they are predicting a 60% chance higher than average season and 30% around normal. These are just some of the factors that lead them to think it might be an above average season compared to what the average has been in the past 30 years. And as always, if you want to learn more about hurricanes, check out our tier two of School of Weather, which has a couple videos dedicated specifically to hurricanes if you're interested in learning about the basics meteorology and how severe weather forms. We have two tiers available for you right now on School of Weather, which will be the top link in the description box. So how do these leaders within the National Weather Service have this confidence that they're right. talking about? There's been some improvements uh -huh. uh, to the forecasting models. There's also been improvements to warnings that they want to implement this year. And some of those are, NOAA's hurricane analysis and forecast system model will contain another upgrade, which they expect to improve tracking and intensity forecasts another 5%. This will help forecasters provide more accurate watches and warnings. NOAA's National Hurricane Center and Central Pacific Hurricane Center will be able to issue tropical cyclone advisory products up to 72 hours before the arrival of a storm surge or tropical storm force winds on land, giving communities more time to prepare. NOAA's Climate Prediction Center's Global Tropical Hazards Outlook, which provides advanced notice of potential tropical cyclone risks, has been extended from two weeks to three weeks to provide additional time for preparation and response. Other enhancements include Spanish language text products will be available for the Tropical Weather Outlook, Public Advisories, the Tropical Cyclone Discussion, the Tropical Cyclone Update, and Key Messages. The experimental version of the Forecast Cone Graphic will make another appearance this year, which includes inland tropical storm and hurricane watches and warnings in effect for the continental U.S. New for this year, the graphic will highlight areas where a hurricane watch and tropical storm warning are simultaneously in effect. A rip current risk map will be generated when at least one active tropical system is present. So now let's take a look at some of the tools that they're going to be using for this year's hurricane season. But before we get into that, can we have a moment of silence for the NAM? I know it's not exactly hurricane related, but the news has dropped that they're getting rid of the NAM. Our blessed NAM who tries her best. They are updating her with a different version that'll probably actually forecast things correctly, but the NAM, we just needed a moment of silence for that. Okay, we can continue now. We got so used to its biases. We just loved how it blew up storms when there was no relative humidity and when there were supposed to be storms and every other model called for that, the NAM said it would be a clear day and I wouldn't need my jacket. <laughs> Who are we gonna laugh at now? We don't have the NAM. The GFS, <laughs> until that gets fixed. <laughs> NOAA will introduce a new experimental electronically scanning radar system called ROARS on NOAA's P-3 Hurricane Hunter research aircraft. The system will scan beneath the plane to collect data on the ocean waves and the wind structure of the hurricane. NOAA Weather Prediction Center's experimental probabilistic precipitation portal provides user-friendly access to see the forecast for rain and flash flooding 
up to three days in advance. This innovative enhancement was driven mostly by last year's Hurricane Helene, which caused extreme inland rainfall and flooding across the southeast U.S. How many peas can they throw into a center? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at my laptop off here to the side, kind of like, oh, yeah, there is a lot there, is there? It's like it, it was a mouthful. Oh, yeah, we just uh, kind of start calling these things like Dave or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's right. Noah's experimental product. Dave. Dave. <laughs> well, you try saying the National Weather Service's predictional pr precipitation forecast. I can't even say it. What are we talking about next? The names of the storms? <laughs> Let's show you a graphic that's going to be the names of the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season hurricanes. They're looking for 13 to 19 named storms. So if you go 13 to 19 deep there, it's, if it pans out, yep. that's what we're looking for is somewhere in the mid to latter part of this list. We'll have to see what yep. happens. We'll have a video update for you guys later in the season. That's right. And as of filming this video, we've already had a couple of those names checked off the list, including Chantel's. We were just in Charleston, South Carolina, and got to see Chantel in person. Because, of course, when we go to the beach, that's when the tropical storm hits. But, you know. We're starting to develop a reputation. You know, if Jim Cantori is somewhere, you know, okay, there's going to be a storm. We're kind of hedging well, toward that he way He follows for us. the storms. The storms follow us. The storms follow Again, us. Again, if you haven't seen our storm chasing season this uh, this year, go check that out. As The same go thing check. happened. We apparently are storm magnets. That's right. There you have it. Noah's prediction for the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season. Again, if you like what you saw, be sure to leave a like, subscribe down below, so you never miss the next Meteorology Month. Day. If you haven't already clicked on that top link in the description box, go on over to School Weather. Join us over there. It's a fun time, great community. We'd love to have you. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram popping up here. If you weren't following while we were in Tornado Alley, you missed out on a ton of cool stuff that we posted live, but there's still time to join in on the action this year, as I'm sure there'll be plenty coming up with the hurricane season. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. Stop coffee. Ice.